In today's MLB recap, Shohei Otani not only hit a baseball 440 feet, but he also passed his idol Ichiro with this stolen base. Stay tuned, we'll talk about what he did. Also, there's a huge lawsuit going on involving Otani. That's a crazy story in itself. Don't miss out on that one. A Marlins player just legged out three triples in one game. Three triples. I can't remember the last time I saw anyone do that. The Mets got hosed. Ball four was called strike three. And then Francisco Alvarez, the guy who just got hosed, he left later in the game with back issues. A guy named Stone embarrassed the Phillies. His actual name is Stone and Max Freed. He might have just pitched his final game in a Braves uniform. A lot to talk about today. Just a reminder, everyone, as the season winds down, if you're going to any playoff games or football games anytime soon, save yourself 20 bucks off on SeatGeek using code Fuzzy. Same thing on Underdog Fantasy. The playoffs are right around the corner, but they got football, basketball, again, any sport that you can think of. When you download or sign up using code Fuzzy, you get up to $1,000 in bonus cash credit and this free pick -em, completely on me if you use code fuzzy so much is at stake in this first game of the recap if the tigers win not only will they secure a playoff spot for the first time in i think a decade but also they'll hand the white Sox their 121st loss the most in baseball history garrett crochet was lights out six strikeouts over four scoreless he looked as good as ever but because he's on an innings limit he only went those four and of course as soon as he comes out the tigers they loaded them up and they got cooking comerica is rocking i mean they were allowed 45,000 people in attendance there was a wild pitch that allowed the Tigers to take an early lead. Veerling sack fly was big considering Zach Deloach of the White Sox. He crushed his first big league home run. I wanted to say first of the season, but he's a rookie. That's his first ever. We head to the seventh. It's 2-1, and Andy Abanez, he was handed three bases. Fletcher, he just flat out missed it. Usually, he's pretty sure handed out there. They intentionally walked Matt Veerling to hopefully set up a double play lefty-lefty versus Riley Green, but Riley went to the deepest part of the park off the wall. That's an RBI double. Veerling, he scores on a wild pitch. And if we head to the ninth, Jason Foley's out for his 28th save. It was a scary final out. There was a small little collision, but they hang on. Foley has a 1.5 year since the beginning of August. He and Tyler Holton carry the bullpen all season long. And for the first time in 10 years, the Tigers will play October baseball. Here's AJ Hinch after the game. In my opinion, that dude can manage his you know what off. He's still an elite manager. And when I asked you in, in the middle of the season, remember I asked you, what kind of team do you want to be? I guess you wanted to be a player. So with that W, the Orioles and the Tigers have officially grabbed the top two wild card spots. So all Kansas City has to do now is win and they're in. Max Fried could be making his final start as a Brave. Remember, he's a free agent after the season. He had a sick first inning, two strikeouts and a 1-2-3 10 pitch first. Sean Murphy, a brutal season. He's only batting 197 on the year, but that is a two run missile. He has 10 home runs in 70 games. I guess we're going to skip all the way to the eighth inning. Max Fried went 1-2-3 again. That's eight shutout on 82 pitches. Let me repeat that. Eight scoreless on 82 pitches, eight strikeouts. That is all-time efficiency right there. Marcel, he just stole a base. His first of the year, they caught the Royals off balance, so he scores on the surprise thievery. The ball gets away. It's 3-0 for Freed. Make it nine strikeouts. Tommy Pham, you're done as well. Two outs. But then he walked Bobby Witt Jr. Michael Massey then doubled. Luckily, Witt did not score. This is a business move. The Braves are trying to make the playoffs. You can't worry about feelings. Max has pulled one out away from a complete game shutout. He gets a standing ovation. That was the correct move. Rizal Iglesias versus Salvador Perez. Rizal now has 33 saves. So the Royals celebration does have to wait. They're hoping for a Twins loss, whereas the Braves, they need the Mets and the Diamondbacks to both lose. Like I briefly mentioned, all hope is not lost for the Royals. Even though they lost, if Minnesota drops this game, the Royals will clinch a spot in the playoffs. Ryan O'Hearn off of Pablo Lopez. He dropped the bat. Once again, the Twins are trailing in a game. Pablo, he did bear down. Props to him. He left with eight strikeouts. Just those two runs. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just be honest. Twins fans, I mean, you got to be disappointed in Pablo Lopez, right? He had a near five year A. His first 23 starts, he allowed seven runs. His start before this one, I just think that he was disappointing. I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there. And he's a big reason why they did not make the playoffs. I'm spoiling it. Colton Kowser went perfect perfect off a lefty. Wow. 24 home runs, a 4.1 F4. He's got to be the AL rookie of the year. The Orioles teed off for four more runs in the eighth. And I was just starting to feel bad for twins fans because I mean, the twins not too long ago were 23 games over 500 on August 17th. Fast forward to today. They're 82 and 78 after this loss. That means that they just went 12 and 25 since August 17th. Just a sad collapse. And with that L Kansas city, they can officially start popping the champagne. 
they're in the playoffs. Making our way to the NL side of things, buckle up because it's about to get crazy. The Braves already won, right? That means if Arizona or the Mets don't win, there will be a three-way tie in the NL wild card. Manny's chopper ate up Ketel Marte, so it went from a double play to an RBI single. Jackson, he's trying to add to his NL Rookie of the Year case, which is huge because Paul Skeens is going against the Yankees today. If he carves, I think it might be Paul's. Marte, that's a tough day at second base. He threw this ball away, so Machado can score. The former Diamondback, he's back in town. The freight train, David Peralta, drove in an RBI as Corbin Carroll. He started the comeback. He's got 22 home runs, 33 stolen bases. You would have never guessed that he was essentially useless in the first half. That's how hot he's been over the last two, two and a half months. Xander, he and Cronenworth kind of teamed up to steal a hit from Christian Walker. That could have been a big problem. And Lourdes, I thought that ball was gone. That is a long RBI flyout. It's 4-2 Padres. And San Diego then started another little two-out rally as Luis had Three base hits. His second was an RBI triple. So Luis is the only guy ahead of Shohei Otani for the triple crown. We'll talk about that in a second. Eugenio Suarez now has 99 RBIs. He makes it 5-3. to three. Manny can't get there. He also can't get to this one. So Perdomo now has two ducks on a pond. And that was a weird half swing. I don't know what happened there, but that essentially ended the game. Robert Suarez now has 36 saves, and the Padres do in fact secure home advantage in the wild card series. Reese, he's trying to spoil the Mets' chance at a wild card spot. Make that 10 grand slams for the Brewers on the year. That was off of Manaya as well, and manaya has been really good for months now. That's a huge confidence booster for Reese heading into the playoffs. If you guys don't remember Reese, he was a playoff machine back with the Phillies. Lindor, he's still dealing with that back issue, and the broadcast even said, like, he's not right. So that error was followed up by another miscue, Tyrone Taylor in center field. I think that was Tyrone Taylor. An RBI double for Bryce Terang. Yelly, he was in the booth to see it all. Not only that play, but this one as well. Sal Freelich, he had to leave with a max effort attempt. I'll tip my cap but there was like, don't be doing that with a couple games left he's got to get an MRI on the hip praying that he's going to be okay Mark Vientos here we go the comeback begins 27 home runs he makes it 5-2 back-to-back -back games of the home run by the way for Vientos it's the top of the fourth El Troll Francisco Alvarez he's in with two on blue that's awful. He steals ball four. We have no idea what would have happened from there. He steals the rally as well. Carlos Mendoza, the manager, he's ejected. He got his money's worth. And then later in the game, Alvarez had to leave with back spasms. What is going on? Jackson Chorio, he made a dazzling play and left as well. But now he's banged up. I think that he's going to be okay, but he's limping after making that grab. The Mets, they do score one on that sack fly. Bryce Terang, who I said yesterday might win a gold glove. He dropped a run. Look at that. A run scores. By the way, J.D. Martinez after that error is now 0 for 35. Milwaukee, are they about to implode? Gary Sanchez. He saves the vibes and the momentum for the Brew Crew. 430 feet as Trevor McGill. He got the final four outs for his 21st save. The Mets... They do drop a game, so let's look at the wild card. We know the Padres already secured the top spot. That means the Mets, the Braves, and the Diamondbacks are all tied for the final two spots. I love the third wild card. It's been so much fun to keep track of. Yes, this is a great move. A lot of people did not like it, but this is fun. So before we talk about that lawsuit kind of involving Shohei Otani to Oscar, he just tied a career high in home runs. Uh, I thought he had 40 with the Blue Jays, but I guess 32 was his career high. I thought he had 40 once upon a time when he was in Toronto. Ezekiel Tovar, this dude now has 74 extra base hits. He ties it with a triple. Chris Taylor, he untied it with a two-run single. And Otani, he will not stop raising his batting average or clutching up with runners in scoring position. He's off now. That's 57 stolen bases. Chris Taylor, he scores on the bad throw. So with that 57 stolen base, he passes Ichiro for the most stolen bases in a single season by a Japanese-born player, which is just mind-blowing to say out loud. He's recovering from Tommy John. Anyways, enough fanboying, at least for the next couple seconds. Andy Pajes, he's getting hot at the right time. He wants playing time in the playoffs. That's three home runs and seven RBIs his last four starts. Shohei, we get it. You're the greatest player ever. Get this. Otani, with that home run, is now 12 for his last 13 with runners in score position. He's number one in home runs with 54, number one in RBIs with 130. He's five points behind Luis Arise because Otani, I think, had four base hits. Luis had three, so Otani is so close to a triple crown. Arise is the only guy in his way. Oh, by the way, he's got 57 stolen bases. Here's where the lawsuit kicks in. His 50th home run ball that was hit down in Miami, it seems like it was hit forever ago because he's already had like 54, 50-something like that home runs. It's currently at 
auction with Golden. The dude in the black is the person who went home with it. He rejected $300,000 from the Dodgers and Shohei. He gave it to Golden where the starting bid is $500,000. The kid in red is taking legal action against Golden and that guy in the black shirt. He says that he had the ball first. Listen, I'm no Zach Campbell. I'm not a ball hawk. I don't know the unwritten rules of ball catching and all of that stuff. But to me, it seemed like it was an all out scramble, a dog pile. To me, the kid in red got there a teeny bit late. A judge, he said that it's going to go to auction, but it can't be sold until the kid in red gets a chance to explain. Maybe they throw him a bone. They give him five to 10 grand, say, here's college money. I don't know. But what do you make of that? A lawsuit is in place over Otani's 50th home run ball over who actually caught it. I cannot remember the last time I saw someone leg out three triples in one game, but it happened up in Toronto. I almost said down in Toronto. Well, like Canada is up for what, 99% of us. Jesus Sanchez, that is an RBI double. Jonah Bride, he continues his Mike Piazza impression. Another home run. He has 10 in the second half or maybe even 11. Here's Xavier Edwards' first of three. He is a bona fide offensive threat. The defense does need a ton of work, but in the box, he is legit. His second triple came in the fourth inning as Griffin Conine broke his bat for an RBI right before he broke out for a home run in the seventh inning. That's got to feel good because he was once with the Jays. He was traded for Jonathan VR way back in 2020. That is a name I have not heard in a while. Xavier, number three X, had four RBIs and a three triple day. He's the first Marlin to ever have three, three baggers in one game. I think that ties an MLB record. We've never seen a four triple game. Jonah Bright again. There it is. That's why I said 11. 11 home runs and a 140 OPS plus in the second half. He has a 150 OPS plus versus righties all season long. The dude rakes. Things got a little bit scary for Cubs fans. I thought that Pete was heading straight for a collision with Ian Happ. The wind was going crazy. Ellie, he saw that it dropped. He's going to try and go for three, but Pete hit the green on his throwing meter. He's got an absolute rock and Ellie, he's out trying for an extra base. Ezok, look at the dive, the throw. That was a sick play right there. Nick Martinez, he's now trying to keep the Cubs off the board, but a leadoff double from Nico and a Bunt from PCA set up a sack fly. Miguel Amaya, he saw the ball moving in the wind, and he almost ended up like Pete Crow Armstrong because that wind was just winding. Fraley does battle back to make the grab, but Chicago does score. Jamison, he went seven scoreless. He was really good in September. Three earned runs total over his final 32 innings. Nick Martinez, I hate to say he does take the tough L, but that's the first time he ever went eight innings. Maybe his final start as a red, he will take the L. Like I said, Porter Hodge, he's been really good. Eight pitch ninth inning. That game only lasted an hour and 48 minutes. The Nationals embarrassed, and I mean embarrassed, Ranger Suarez and the Phillies. Juan Yepes, that is a high exit velocity RBI single, and is that who I think it is? Stone Garrett is back. Yes, his name is Stone. That's his first game off the IL. He's up to 14 home runs and a 130 OPS plus in his first 117 big league games. He also has 25 doubles, so the dude absolutely rakes. His exit velocities are crazy, and they should be. His name is Stone. Ranger was just not himself. He didn't even look at runners. They took off for a double steal. Jacob Young, we know that he can fly, so this is an RBI single, and that's the first inning. The Nationals got right back to it in the second. Two in off the bat of Cabot Ruiz. That is a six spot off of Ranger Suarez, who gave up seven hits and two walks on 59 pitches over two innings. The Phillies tried to steal a run, but the Nationals were ready for it. Hayes, you're out, buddy. Stone, here we go. Another base hit. He makes it a three RBI night. Then he doubled in the seventh. So that's 26 doubles for his career already. He was a triple away from the cycle in his first game in over a year. Austin Hayes, I'll give him some credit. He ripped a solo home run. That's only a second as a Philly. But what were the Phillies doing? Boom, he botched it. Sosa then threw it back to Philly. Kbert makes it nine to one. He joined Stone with a three RBI game. If you're a Phillies fan or just a casual fan, is that a worrisome game for the Phillies or are they just coasting and trying to stay healthy? The Pirates are in New York and after Juan Soto was intentionally walked, Jazz Chisholm Jr. He said, I don't mind lefty-lefty matchups, everyone. He laces a two-run single. Moments later, the Yankees did a double steal. Nothing came of it runs-wise, but Jazz has 40 stolen bases. He has 10 home runs and 18 stolen bases and 45 games of the Yankees. That is crazy production. Rodon, he didn't have his best stuff command-wise. He did go five shutout, though, when Pittsburgh, they lit some cannonballs. Nicky Gonzalez with the wall scrape I thought that Jason actually robbed that, and so did Nikki G. Could you imagine Brian Reynolds in a Yankee uniform? So a couple years ago, Brian Reynolds was almost traded for Jason, but they said, no, we're not going to include him. I think Spencer Jones was in that fake trade as well. Brian Reynolds in Yankee Stadium would be unreal. Like, he doesn't even need the short porch. Look at that swing right there. He had one from each side of the dish. Being an elite switch hitter has to be so much fun. Like, how do you even teach that? You guys have to let me know in the comments. He has 24 home runs, and then the former Yankee closer rolled his Chapman. He's back in the Bronx. Yeah, he was... 
he was staring all right. Two strikeouts. For the season, he's up to 97 strikeouts in about 60-ish innings. He has a career 14.8 strikeouts per nine. That's 1,245 strikeouts in 759 innings, which is insane. Over 1,200 strikeouts for a guy who's never even started a game before. He could be getting a sneak peek into the ALDS. Houston, they're taking on the guard dogs in Cleveland, which could be the matchup if the Astros advance past the wild card series. Kyle Tucker's RBI in the fourth made it 3-0. The first two runs were kind of boring. I promise you guys, you did not miss anything. Ronel Blanco, he lowered his ERA even further. He yet again looked unhittable. He didn't allow a single base hit through four. Lots of weak contact and just missing barrels. There was one barrel off the bat of J-Ram, but he got robbed by Jake Myers because Jake Myers has elite range. I mean, it's so nice to have him out there in the outfield. Blanco then got Josh Naylor to chase at the changeup at his knees. It was raining pretty bad, and Victor Caratini also made it rain. Same with the rookie, Zach Dezenzo. I did not know. I mean, I've talked about this guy before. Maybe I was just going too fast. I didn't realize he was 6'5". That ball went 450. That, that dude's huge. Goodness. Ronell only allowed one base hit, by the way. And where would the Astros be without this guy? A 2.8 ERA. He held it down all season long. Josh Hader stunk in the ninth inning. Two base hits, a walk, two runs. But the Astros, they do take it. That's their 87th win. It still kind of blows my mind that the Mariners lost the West with how elite their starting pitching was all season long. Like, I mean that all season long, Bryce Miller, he's going to get some top three, four, five Cy Young votes. Then you have Gilbert, Castillo, Kirby. They were all awesome. Brian Wu. I mean, he dominated in this game from start one to start 22. He he was really, really good. You saw Lawrence Butler take away extra bases for J-Rod. That kind of sums up their season. J-Rod, he's been spraying extra base hits a lot lately, but again, keyword, lately, he was really bad in the first half. Same with this guy, Mitch Garver. He's got back-to-back -back games with a home run. Three the last week, but again, too little, too late. Cal, I can't praise him enough. Cal Raleigh, he's been the lone consistent home run and RBI guy all year. 32 home runs and 97 RBIs as a backstop. Brian Wu, tip of the cap. Nothing bad to say about him. One hit over five scoreless. Randy's nice grab ends Wu's night. Brian had a 2.8 year rate on the season. Troy Taylor was nasty. Two strikeouts in the ninth. That's his first career save. <sighs> Weird season for the Mariners. I ain't gonna lie. Is this it? Is this the final start for Nick Pavetta in a Red Sox uniform? He is also a free agent after this year. He was great, but also so was Tosh Bradley. Both guys went the first six without a single blemish. Look at these guys just carving up. Nick, he was left in because it's his final start. Why not? But there was trouble in the seventh. Josh Lowe, he socked a long double with two runners on. One score is easy. Johnny DeLuca has elite speed, so he's going for it. Story nabbed him. That is a perfect relay. Nick's day is done. Maybe his career in Boston is done as well. He had a four plus ERA with the Red Sox, so not entirely amazing, but he had a whopping 718 strikeouts and just over 630 innings, so he was a strikeout machine. He's probably going to get a solid contract because of that. Morelli took a bases out of walk for a clutch second run, and it was clutch because Grissom, he tagged up on a Nick Sogard sack fly. That's okay, though. The Rays have Edwin Usita in the ninth inning. That's his fifth save. Pavetta's a free agent. Tyler O'Neill is a free agent. Kenley Jansen's a free agent. Boston has some big decisions to make going into the offseason. What's your prediction for them? Are they going to be big spend or are they going to rely on their current players and their top prospects? Because they got a lot of them. So we know the former GM for the Red Sox, Heim Bloom, he wasn't afraid to make big changes and he's with the Cardinals now and he's basically getting a promotion. He'll be in charge of hiring new player development directors. They called the St. Louis system antiquated. That was the word that they used for the process. So it's going to be cool to see him kind of catch up to modern day baseball, even though I don't think they're that far behind, but still. Big move. You already saw Arnado single and Mason win, and holy moonshot from Gerard Encarnacion. That is a two-run home run. He's tops in exit velocities, bat speeds, but he really has to figure out that strikeout issue. He reminds me a lot of Big Christmas. John Kenzie Noel on the Guardians. San Francisco, they grabbed another after wisely singled, and Yazzie hammered a double off the brick wall in right field. It looked like it was going to be all San Francisco in this one, but Lars and the Redbirds, they battled back. That's 12 home runs for Lars. He has five RBIs the last 24 hours. Mason... He wants the win. I'm sorry, that was bad. No, but for real, Mason, when he tied it after a 13 pitch at bat, that's his 31st double and his 176 hit, which is a lot for a rookie. Burleson, he knocked in another, and Yaz, he just misjudged this line drive off the bat of Lars Newtbar. Newtbar slid in there for a two-run triple. Plenty of insurance for Ryan Helsley, who is probably going to lead baseball in saves. Sorry, Class A. That's two more strikeouts. 49 saves. The Cardinals have so many pieces. I truly mean that. They're back to four games over 500. And honestly, this is going to be one of their most important off seasons I can remember in quite some time. They got to get in the lab and get Victor Scott going and Jordan Walker going. They got to sign some pitchers. 
Their fans are not dumb. They didn't show up for a reason. It was a bad year. The Rangers have pieces for days as well, but just like the Mariners, the Rangers were hit in the face with a sack of bricks, and that was because of health and regression. Evan Carter, Jacob DeGrom, Max Scherzer, Josh Young was out for a while. The good news is Wyatt Langford rakes. He's batting 310 with seven home runs, 19 RBI, six stolen bases without being caught in the month of September. They make it back to back off the bat of Adolis Garcia. El Bombay had a decent year, but he definitely did regress in terms of just getting on base. Also great news for Rangers fans. DeGrom has been really, really good. Five more strikeouts with just a couple base hits over four innings. He had 14 strikeouts, two earned runs over his first 10 innings back. So again, he's on an innings limit. He's not going to go six, seven innings. Carson Kelly, he barreled up a pitch. Same with Marcus Simeon later in the ninth. Marcus, he's so close to a 100 OPS. He's got 23 home runs and a 98 OPS plus after a three hit night. He has a four war despite the fact that he struggled. So at 34 years old, he has a very interesting case. If he has three or four or even average four win seasons, he could have a sneaky little case for the Hall of Fame. Well, everyone, that does it for today's MLB recap. We're winding down on the regular season, but we're not slowing down anytime soon. We have a lot of bangers coming. The playoff recaps are a lot of fun as well, so stick around, hit that subscribe button, have a great rest of your day, and enjoy the web games. Jammed him, and it is caught by the runner takes off and a ground ball. Great stop by Caballero. Throw to first, and oh, they got. Tatis, what a play, can tell. You're in on the look. Yeah. Ground ball to Daryl Hernandez. That's going to be a long throw, and Daryl 